The president of Ambassador Baptist College, a strongly King James-only institution, recently took on the topic of the King James Version in a long message to the student body put on on Facebook. This is the first time a significant King James-only institution has responded to my thinking in public. At least I'm pretty sure Brother Alton Beal was responding to me. I could be flattering myself. I don't think I was the only one that he was talking about. I do know that Beale knows of me because I have spoken with Brother Beale at least twice on the phone. He was sincerely kind and cordial, even in disagreement. Both times, I appreciated that. If I recall correctly, and I'm not sure I am, he had he said he'd read my book. I, I just don't remember that with certainty. That was a couple years ago. I believe that my brothers at Ambassador Baptist College and other major King James-only institutions like Brother Alton Beale are sincere, that they're doing good overall, but that they're wrong to demand exclusive use of the King James Version. And importantly, they think they're preserving their King James-only institutions by refusing to engage with my thinking, but they're actually risking them. I don't seem like a friend to them right now. I know that, but I insist that I am. I'm a friend who's taken on the delicate task of inflicting faithful wounds that I pray are not made worse by my own sin. I want to address what Brother Beale says, comment on his brief comments on the readability of the King James, and then offer some reflections on how public arguments go, reflections I've been forming for years now. And then I will offer to my brother in Christ, Alton Beale, and other leaders of King James-only institutions a way forward that I truly believe will help these schools, institutions that are important and worth preserving. Brother Beale is an excellent representative of mainstream, non-Ruckmanite King james onlyism. He offers notes of humility and carefulness that are not common in that crowd. These are notes that I appreciate and intend to praise in this video. He says a fair bit about manuscripts and textual criticism that I will not engage, however, because I don't need to, as I will explain and have explained, and because I vowed not to. As best I can tell, Brother Alton Beale insists on the exclusive use of the King James Version. He leaves no room that I can see for the use of other Textus Receptus-based Bible translations, translations that use fully intelligible contemporary English, such as the New King James Version or the Modern English Version. I disagree with Brother Beale over textual criticism, but for me, that's a far less important matter than intelligibility, because I don't mind if he prefers the Textus Receptus. I don't even mind a great deal if he thinks it's perfect as long as he makes or uses a translation of his preferred text into fully intelligible contemporary English, because Paul teaches that edification requires intelligibility. So I'm going to skip over everything that Brother Beale says about text until Brother Beale and Ambassador open up liberty to their students to use the New King James or the Modern English Version or the Simplified King James or the KJVER or until they take up my general invitation to work with me on a new translation of the TR or a King James update. I wouldn't even mind. Indeed, this is basically what I have plans laid out to do. If I can find people to work with me, I wouldn't mind if they insisted on an English-only update of the King James Version. I don't think all the translation choices of the King James translators were sacrosanct or perfect. They didn't think that. But there is a pragmatic value in just sticking with the tried and true. This could be done. I will help. I will do all I can to help. And when we hold that Bible in our hands, a Bible in our English, without without the hundreds of dead words and false friends that language change has brought to the King James Version, then Alton and I can have a debate about the Textus Receptus. I want to keep up the drumbeat about readability, and that means critical engagement, though praise for numerous points in Brother Beale's talk is coming. Let me turn to where Beale is, I think, addressing me, or at least addressing the readability issue that I have made paramount. You know, there's some people in the debate today, they like to discuss readability. I'm going to make a frank admission. There are some older words in this book. There sure are. I wrote an article not too long ago about words that we mountain people understand because we have some old English stuff in our vocabulary that we still use today and so it's sort of neat to see that but there are there are some words but I think for the people that say you know what reading the King James Version is like reading Spanish I I think that's a stretch I really appreciate Brother Beale's frank admission but I think his comment about Spanish isn't quite right there are many points that I consider to be legitimate disagreement between Brother Beale's view and my own 
there are places, too, where I don't think I can blame him for missing a technical point. He's a busy college president who probably doesn't need to know about Ugaritic and other languages cognate to Hebrew and how they assist in the study of obscure, obscure Hebrew lexemes. But I would like for him, at least, to represent me and my side accurately in this debate over readability. And I don't know anyone who's ever compared King James English to Spanish. This is what I find almost always happens. King James defenders describe my position as thinking of the King James as totally unintelligible, 100% unintelligible to modern English speakers. But I'd put the percentage at more like 5% unintelligible. It seems they have to paint my position in more lurid colors in order to dismiss it. They have to build a straw man to burn it. If I were him, I would take the opposite tack. I would say, Mark Ward is willing to pull the King James out of our pulpit over a tiny percentage of archaic words, like 5% is enough for him. I encourage Brother Beale to say that next time. That would be accurate. And I think his hearers would dismiss me just as much. I do indeed say that a translation in which 5% of the sentences are difficult or unintelligible because of archaisms is a translation that needs to be revised. I think it's a reasonably simple matter to watch a few of my key videos or read my book and discover that this is what I'm saying. I, I really don't understand why my position keeps being represented in this way. Let's listen to a little more of what Brother Beale says about readability. And you know what? There's some people, they say that you base your choice of aversion on readability and they never consider reliability. <laughs> And I'm not here to discuss all of that today, but listen, I'm just planting a seed. If you talk about they say, well, I want to read what's more readable. Well, what if it's more readable, but it's not right? You know, I don't know how to say this more times, except I just have to maybe mouth the words yet again. There are readable translations of the TR. You can have your TR and read it too. If Brother Beale considers the Textus Receptus to be the most reliable Greek New Testament text, I encourage him to pick a TR edition and go with it. Make or use a translation of that TR into fully intelligible contemporary English pursuant to Paul's teaching in 1 Corinthians 14. My videos at this point must get boring for people. I'm always singing this one note. Ah! But I sing it and sing it and sing it. And so many people start singing with me, which is wonderful. But then when King James and TR defenders try to quote my note, they sing a different one. Ah! Apparently, I just need to repeat myself and keep singing this note. Now, let me turn to a new note that I haven't heard come up in Pro King James talk before. And some of the things that may help you as you deliberate along the way. Here's a few of them. Number one, remember that the preface to the King James Version that was written by the translators is just as inspired as the book of maps and the book of concordance. Well, the translator said, that, ah, that's good. But I would much rather take what Peter and Paul said over a King James translator in a preface. This is a response to work of friends of mine like Josh Barzan, who, took a, who wrote a book called The Forgotten Preface. I'm glad to see Beale responding to this. I think it means he's feeling some good pressure from the excellent thoughts on translation written by the King James translators themselves. That includes their thoughts about whether translations can be perfect, and their answer is no, or who their translations are for. They said their translations were for the very vulgar, the common people in our language. The King James preface is devastating to a King James-only position. That's pretty much all Beale says in relationship to King James readability. And yet, this is the most engagement that I've gotten from any IFB King James-only institutions out there. I'm not surprised that it's coming from Ambassador because under Chuck Surrett, their academic dean in the past, they developed the most responsible version of King James onlyism. Just read their doctrinal statement on their website. I do wonder how long this can go on. How long can IFB King James only institutions like Ambassador refuse to engage directly with the concept of false friends? Maybe 25 years ago, I could be safely ignored, but every single person in the room listening to Brother Beale had a smartphone or other device, and every one of them could easily call up one of my YouTube videos after Brother Beale's talk. And if they did this, if they watched and listened to me, I think they'd have to agree that he didn't really engage, didn't engage my thinking. Maybe I should have had another private conversation with Brother Beale before making this video. I carefully considered this possibility, prayed about it, talked to counselors. But 
those conversations have already happened. I talked to him twice. Now he's made a public statement that's fit for public engagement. I am so hungry for engagement from this sector of the church, a sector that I love and long for, a sector that I want to regain unity with, that I just couldn't let this opportunity slip by. But I cannot say with honesty that I expect careful public engagement from representatives of Ambassador Baptist College at this point, and private conversation didn't appear to get us anywhere. So with sorrow, I take this engagement public. And yet, with delight, now let me turn to what I loved about Brother Beale's talk. There was so much in it that I agreed with. Here's what we believe. We believe that the King James Version is a faithful and excellent translation of the TR, and when you hold it in your hands, you have a copy of the Word of God, period. That is actually really good. It's not Ruckmanism. I could say that sentence too. The King James is the Word of God. I hold it in my hands. Even though I think what he says next is a mild criticism of me or of people who listen to me, I still basically agree with it. Don't forget to live the Bible when contending about the Bible. You know, some people have forsaken a good position because of a poor disposition. I'm not saying that's right. But that's the truth. And you know what? In my life, listen, I want somebody to embrace the truth because of me, not in spite of me. And you know what? There's just there, there's some things in it that go on sometimes. And I'll be honest, sometimes on social media, I'm ashamed for lost people to see my feed because Christians just don't know how to act. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, teach them the Word of God. And here, all of a sudden, this blows up and you're like, wow, you know, it's like maybe I should have a, a secret feed. Here's my, you know, but that's a shame that you almost have to live a dichotomy because sometimes it's just like, it's just like war. I love this. This is my heart too. And if you watch my channel, I think you know that. And I ask you to pray for me and for Brother Beal that we would both continue to do this. I think he does do this. Brother Beal does. He's consistent. I have spoken with him, as I've said, and I've heard testimony about him from people who know him personally. All agree he is a man of integrity and of sincere godliness. But listen to where he takes his argument next. And again, I have to say, I hope I'm not flattering myself, but I think he's targeting me. Ultimately, I can't judge what is right and wrong based on solely on disposition. And there's a lot of younger preachers that are doing that today. You know, I've had engagement with preachers who held different positions of mine, and I've purposefully kept the correspondence that I have, never to show it to anybody. But I'm amazed at how gracious they could be in public and how nasty they could be in private. <laughs> what you see is not always what is right. I'm going to tell you, there's people out there, they've got a great disposition. Man, they're winsome and they're charming. Isn't that true of Joel Olstein? Guy smiles from six in the morning till midnight at night. And he can tell you all kinds of things. Listen to me, young people. If you determine, you see somebody, they got nasty, but they held a good position, and you base your position solely on somebody's disposition, your position is on shaky ground. My goal is have a good disposition and have a good position. Brother Beal also says, I had a little trouble locating this in the timeline. I think I'm getting that quote right, however, that a good disposition is a great cloak for error. I agree and disagree. Indeed, I do not want anyone to follow my views because I seem like a nice guy. I don't seem like a nice guy to everybody. A lot of people take me as fake. I want people to follow what I say because it's right and true. At the same time, it seems like a really acidic thing to say. Is everyone who demonstrates love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, are, are we all generating, generating fake fruit in order to cloak error? Is Beale himself doing that? I'm not so cynical as to say that. I do not think that. I do not believe that of my brother Alton Beale. I'd like to take the opportunity to express what I think is agreement with Brother Beale. That, on the flip side, those who demonstrate the works of the flesh are not cloaking error, they are advertising it, they are flaunting it. The angry, dirty, insulting, vile spirit of Peter Ruckman manifests itself as ungodly on its face. If a professing Christian frequently fails to have gentleness and self-control in what is clearly an intra-Christian debate, they are sinning. 
I do think that some people involved in this debate can be rejected out of hand, like Ruckman, because they, can, they are so obviously fleshly. I think that far too many people excuse their fleshliness by saying that the gospel itself is at stake in the King James only debate, when this is manifestly not true. Brother Beale does not seem to think that it's true, or he wouldn't be so gracious to those who disagree. He wouldn't have critical text friends like he talks about. At one point, Beale tells a story about George Whitfield, who observed that a lot of his converts in the Great Awakening were becoming Baptists. Beale quotes Whitfield as saying, a lot of my chicks have become ducks. That's how Beale feels about ambassador grads who no longer hold to the King James. That's what he says. In other words, the parallel he draws is that of denominational differences among true Christians. He does not treat the King James Version or the Texas Receptus as a great gulf fix between belief and unbelief. That I very much appreciate. One of my own godly counselors said to me when he looked over this script or an earlier version of it, good disposition should be the entry point to Christian discourse. And we've got Bible teaching on this, in meekness instructing those in opposition, Paul says. And we've got teaching from the Bible on the other side, right next to the Right next to the list of the fruit of the Spirit, Paul describes the works of the flesh. Division, contention, and strife are right there on that list. King James-onlyism most definitely has a public reputation for promoting contention and strife. King James-onlyism, even though it has gracious adherents like Brother Beale, produces many, many people who are proud of their ignorance and who pull out nukes in every social media discussion. I've lost count of the number of times King James only us have told me that I am not saved because I don't use the King James Version exclusively. Beale does not do this, and I am grateful. My goal is the same as Beale's, right position and right disposition. Beale's argument can't be that people, all people with good dispositions are wrong, or he'd be cutting off the branch that he's sitting on. He has a good disposition, and again, I'm glad to recognize this. And there are more positive things that I can point to in the video. But I'm going to tell you something. You be ethical and you'll be honest. If you don't hold that position, then you cannot sign that doctrinal statement. Go to a place where you can agree and thrive and go. But don't be dishonest. Seniors, every time you, when you see that doctrinal statement, can you affirm it? If you can't, you go see Brother Hankey. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm not sure, but by the time they talk about it, they are and it's, it's okay. But, but listen, be honest, be ethical. If you're going to go into a church and that church is established and using the King James Version and you have an agenda before you go in, listen, you are wrong. At the very least, sit down with a pulpit committee and say, I don't believe like you do, but I sure would like to change it. I agree 100% here. If you are not King James only, don't lead a pulpit committee to believe that you are. Tell them the truth. Beale says yet other good things. He says, be sure that the book supersedes the books. Amen. He says, don't bow to ignorance or academia. That is profound, and that is exactly right. And I want to acknowledge something that I think perhaps Beale is acknowledging, too, when he says that. Each of us is probably closer to one ditch or the other. I'm not praising myself to say I'm closer to the academia ditch. I just am. (laughs) A number of the temptations I face beyond those that are common to man are academic temptations. There's a fair bit of pressure on me to become egalitarian or an old earth creationist, or at least a lot softer on those things. For example, I just had a private interaction with a major evangelical egalitarian scholar, can't give more details, and I feel the pressure from him and others and from my daily crowd at work. I feel certain temptations Beale does not because he has a different calling and is in a different circle. But Brother Beale and his circles need to acknowledge, I think, that they are closer to the ignorance ditch. They face its temptations. They face the temptation to give down-home put-downs of edumacation, of going to cemetery. I think the solution for both of us is to come back to the middle of the road by being clothed with humility. I honor what God is doing at Ambassador. I love the zeal for evangelism and personal holiness. I am a traditionalist in so many ways. I hate worldliness, as they certainly do. I have learned, and I must continue to learn, not to use my academic training as some kind of trump card in argument. That's why I have tons of videos dedicated to lay accessible teaching on the King James Version. My argument is never, I have a PhD, so you have to listen to me. I think you could watch my channel for a long time and not even know that I have a PhD. Brother Beale and his tribe need to clothe themselves with humility just like I do. 
Brother Beale acknowledges in his talk that he has never with his own two eyes beheld manuscripts of the Greek New Testament or of the Hebrew Bible. I have. I've seen both many times. Surely my experience looking at these documents doesn't mean that I'm right about bibliology, but neither does his lack of experience or education in those areas. We all have to back off of areas where we don't really know stuff. We still need to vote for this politician or that one, even if we don't really understand the respective theories of macroeconomics that each is advancing and representing. We still need to choose a Bible translation at the bookstore, even if we don't really understand New Testament textual criticism. But to speak boldly about these matters and yet admit ignorance about them is a folly and shame. That's what Proverbs says. A little humility will do a great deal of good to both sides. Beale also points out a number of languages, the number of languages that don't have a Bible translation at all. He went to the Museum of the Bible and saw this. That is so true, and I too feel that the whole King James only controversy is a distraction from the far more important tax task of getting God's words into all the languages of the world. Beale says, I'd much rather have questions about history and theology. And I think that's an insight. I really do. I feel the same way. I truly do. And that's one reason that I'm fine with him using TR-based translations. I will end my section of mostly praising Brother Beale with a final critique. I am grieved that, yet again, I've listened to a long talk from the portion of King James Onlyism that says the text is the issue, and yet there was no recognition given of the existence of Textus Receptus-based contemporary translations into intelligible English, such as the NKJV or MEV. I have spoken to ambassador grads who told me that they graduated from the school having zero knowledge that there are TR-based contemporary translations in our English. I listened to Chuck Surrett's two addresses given on the King James at ambassador a number of years ago, and he said he doesn't know whether the New King James uses the Texas Receptus or not. That would seem rather important. I listened to numerous lessons from academic dean Matthew Hankey on the King James uh, at ambassador, and he too failed to acknowledge that there are TR-based translations in contemporary English. Unless I've missed something, and I'd be happy to be corrected, this institution is not telling an outright lie, but has come to the place where they are morally culpable for not telling the whole truth. And this brings me to my thoughts on controversy in general, on how public debates among Christians and probably beyond that go. I'll offer these thoughts, and then I'll try to offer a way forward in this debate. Let me make myself the bad example. I haven't read a whole lot of Augustine. It's in my life plans, but I just haven't gotten there yet. I read select pieces, however, for my dissertation work on love. And I stumbled across a quotation from Augustine that sure sounded like the standard evangelical argument for biblical inerrancy. I used this in a piece on the Logos blog once, however, and I got immediate pushback from non-evangelicals, Catholics, I think, as I recall, who really do know Augustine in a way I just don't. I knew I was in over my head, so I just shut up. I won't talk again about that until I do more homework. This is the way public debates go. Ignorant men are put to silence, as I was, or not. Or they just keep talking, even after their ignorance has been demonstrated. When people realize that they're in over their heads, they should stop talking and go do more homework. But that isn't the way real life is. It wasn't that way before social media, and it certainly is not that way now. (laughs) This does not mean that you have to bow to academia. Newsflash, there will always... Always be someone smarter than you who disagrees with you. This is life in a world full of fallen and finite people. I most certainly feel this way. There are some evangelical egalitarians, for example, who are just flat smart. I think they're wrong, but I try to give them their respect, their their due respect. And if they are experts in some area of study like ancient Roman history, an area that's generating talking points that is inconvenient, that are inconvenient for my decidedly complementarian viewpoint, they don't change my mind, but they make me treat our disagreement with some humility at these points. To refuse to do that would be to bow to ignorance. And yet, I think King James-only institutions are indeed stuck bowing to ignorance because their constituencies are actually in their hearts Ruckmanites. I showed this in my video recently, Practical Ways to Avoid Ruckmanism. People like Brother Beale and Brother Chuck Surratt can't truly entertain another TR-based translation because the pastors and parents who send them students would pull their kids in a time period known to Southern chronometric professionals as lickety-split. 
This is why I have taken my argument to the masses. Leaders of King James-only institutions cannot change, and I totally get it. If they change now, they will indeed be writing a death sentence for their schools and churches and mission boards. The people of their constituencies will not have it. The King James is too easy a doctrinal litmus test. In that world, those who use the King James Version are good, and those who don't are bad. I do not believe that Alton Beale or any other leader of a King James-only institution is secretly on my side and publicly holding to the King James only out of a desire to preserve his institution. I believe, instead, that love for one's own school, one's own institution, is a good and proper and excellent thing that nonetheless makes it very, very difficult to examine any false ideas that lay in the foundation of one's own institution. False friends in the King James Version are invisible to those who would kill their institutions if they saw them. So this is how public arguments go. Neither side can admit the truths that are inconvenient to them lest they spook their constituencies. I feel certain that this is what Alton Beale would say about me, that I am using modern versions because this is my school's position or the view of my tribe or my teachers more generally. He would say that I'm unable to acknowledge the dangers in a viewpoint that seems to omit Bible verses and seems to make Jesus a liar in John 7 because he says he's not going up to the feast, but then he does. I have tried to give due weight to these concerns, and I have to say, King James only has have actually increased my willingness to give weight to those very concerns that I just mentioned. I have done this. And I admit, these are inconvenient truths from my view. They are not easy to explain to people who love the, B the Bible and believe as I do in its inerrancy. I am mentioning these inconvenient truths now as an olive branch, as a possible inducement to people like Brother Beale to meet me halfway and acknowledge the existence of false friends in the King James Version. It's so hard to do this, to meet people halfway, even though this is what it means to let your moderation be known to all men. See my video about that. It would indeed be very publicly embarrassing for me to suddenly realize that King James only has have been right all along in their viewpoint. I sometimes fear to take a step of even an inch in that direction by acknowledging inconvenient truths. But I want to tell you something. I have had moments where I have worked so hard to understand my opponents that I almost felt like I could be tipped over into their camp. I am not kidding. I can feel the pull. I can understand the draw of a perfect English Bible translation. Brother Beal will not change. He cannot change on the King James Version until enough people in his school's constituency are persuaded that the archaisms in the King James Version are genuine reasons to be concerned. At that point, I suspect there will be a tipping point. This is my prediction. The Ruckmanites will be further exiled to the margins. They'll be on the fringe. But the mainstream King James onlyists, the ones who really do believe that the preservation of the Hebrew and Greek texts of Scripture is the real issue, they will suddenly find that it's okay to use a King James update. I have been praying that this realization would produce some apologies from King James only leaders and institutions who now see that they should have given weight to this possibility all along, or at least have mentioned that there are TR based King James or er, translations in contemporary English. I get messages all the time, sometimes from leading King James onlyists who show me that they'd like to see this happen, but they get shot at so hard when they suggest a King James update that they back off. Even pastors do this. They retreat to Beale's stated position that the King James is the only acceptable TR-based translation into English. And so we slog on in this debate, pushed apart a little further than we really need to be by the demands of our respective tribes. And this is a frustration, isn't it? It's a frustration common to public debates. It's frustrating to watch someone with the evident intelligence and goodwill of Alton Beale make arguments that people like me have answered repeatedly. A lot of people who comment on my channel express that same frustration to me. How can we make our King James-only relatives listen, they say to me. They say this with interrobangs at the end, you know, those little pieces of punctuation that provide a, a combine a question mark with an exclamation point. It's hard not to feel like these brothers are in some way dishonest. How could they act as if they haven't heard what we've said? This is what people say to me. I resist this impulse, however, to call someone dishonest as long as I possibly can. And I don't find it too hard to do that with people like Brother Alton Beale and numerous others in the King James Only movement. I don't think they are being self-consciously dishonest. I think they're doing what, they, what we all do, exiling inconvenient facts that don't fit our preferred narratives for as long as possible. In my experience, this is not always and not even usually a conscious act. At a certain point in life, I realized that 
it isn't only in salvation that the Spirit must grant repentance. It's in our sanctification, too, and that includes our doctrinal views. This is a little discouraging for a moment, right? It means many, many people will not repent from their bad ideas, whatever they are. But quickly enough, it becomes encouraging to me anyway. It means that the Spirit is with me if and when I am with the truth. And right after that, it's humbling to me. It means that I, fallen and finite as I am, am almost certainly frustrating somebody with my own errors. Maybe it's I'm grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe it's I'm provoking my children. Maybe it's I'm frustrating my wife. Clearly, my belief in the Spirit's necessary role in sanctifying other people's doctrinal ideas and my own hasn't made me quiescent in either area, inactive. I don't just let go and let God. Instead, I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that is with me, mooning and moaning, complaining and groaning. This won't make other people stop sinning and start to listen. I might as well do what the New Testament says and patiently instruct those who have set themselves in opposition to the truth in any way. I might as well be humble, because surely I have my errors. And what do I have that I didn't receive? I might as well be gracious, because the evident dedication to evangelism and personal holiness at Ambassador are strengths I want to continue to emulate. I just cannot and will not claim that my side is all good and Beale's side is all bad. God seems to give gifts to people who I think are muddle-headed about some stuff. I'm glad to see in Beale a recognition of the same thing going the other direction. That's why I'm engaging with him, and there are many people I won't engage with. I do think there is a way forward here, and this is a long video. Let me state clearly, I don't want Ambassador to die. I don't even want it to come all the way to my perspective on modern Bible translations, at least not quickly, because if it tried doing that right now, it would die. Its constituency would leave in less than one-tenth of one farthing of what's left over when the lickety splits. Here is how Ambassador and other King James-only institutions, mission boards, colleges, etc., from speaking untruths, while maintaining as much of their constituency as is righteously possible, obey the Bible specifically 1 Corinthians 14 that says edification requires intelligibility. Ambassador Baptist College and Crown College of the Bible and West Coast Baptist College and others that I could name who say that the text is the issue. I say to you, show that it's the issue by getting together with me to make a translation of the TR that you have a say in and therefore one that you trust. A translation again of whatever Hebrew and Greek text you prefer. A translation into fully intelligible contemporary English. Again, I will help you. I have numerous contacts among King James and TR defenders who are interested in doing this very thing. I got emails in my inbox right now. A groundswell of support is rising. Maybe it shouldn't matter so much if that support is present or not. It's the right thing to do. And I was taught in fundamentalism that you do the biblical thing, but it does matter because your institutions matter. They are worth preserving. I wouldn't throw them in the trash. Let me speak pragmatically again, this time with a warning, however. If mainstream King James-only institutions keep muddling through, insisting that they're not Ruckmanites, that they don't believe in the double inspiration of the Bible, of the King James, but failing to acknowledge that there are other translations of the TR into contemporary English, you'll start, you'll keep losing graduates from your constituency, especially pastors under 40. I know this because they are talking to me privately just about every single day. They love their King James-only alma maters. But they feel intuitively from the way the King James gets talked about at these institutions that they're no longer welcome at those schools, even if they use the new King James or the modern English version, which technically fit the doctrinal statements of all these Texas the Issue schools. And I think you will find over time, mainstream King James only schools, that you are more and more stuck inside your constituency, one that's, you're going to be held captive by Ruckmanite beliefs. I truly could be wrong. It may be that you can wait it out and the Ruckmanites will die off and your constituency will be purged of them. Maybe that could happen. But I wouldn't bet the institution on that. If I were a leader of an institution within mainstream King James onlyism, I would do what one of them recently told me he was dedicated to doing. I would purge out the leaven of Ruckmanism. That's something else that I think Beale can and should do. I think he should tell his students, yes, Mark Ward is wrong to trust critical text Bibles. That's fine. Sure. And tell them why. Give your case. But also tell them why treating the King James itself as inspired and perfect is just as wrong, if not wronger. And admit to them publicly and explicitly and concretely with this, with 
Examples, that language change has created dead words and false friends in the King James Version. This should be possible because it's the truth. Tell the truth. I've just had some public and private interaction with the King James Version's best champion on Twitter, Joe Shakur. It was all constructive. It was all cordial. We disagree over textual criticism, but we agree that the goal of Bible translation is getting the Bible to the people in a language they can understand. He has concerns that I believe are honest about the quality of the New King James Version and the Modern English Version, but he also is concerned enough about KJV archaisms that, and he revealed this publicly at my private urging, in his church, Joe's church, he has used the KJV ER, Easy Reader, in his church for new believers. Joe is open to a King James update. He's worked on one himself. We are together on this, and it's been a great delight to see the Lord smoothing over the gaps that exist between us, uniting us over what I believe is most important in the King James debate, readability. If you are interested in a King James update, Joe or I need to hear from you. We would love to hear from you. Just write us a note. There are many obstacles to this possibility, but if enough people are interested, it can be done. Let me end this long, long video with some words that I received from an ambassador graduate who looked over this script in advance. I do appreciate Brother Beal and many of the men at Ambassador. In many ways, they shaped me into what I am today. I know when I was going through this move that is away from King James onlyism, there were times when I felt like I was betraying or at least disappointing some of the men who I appreciated so much and who had poured themselves into my life. It wasn't until some time later that I realized that the greatest things those men taught me was a love for God's word and the importance of knowing and understanding God's word. I feel exactly the same way as this brother. So mine is a biblical call. Except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air.